April 8, 2021, the Yenkin Majestic Paint Corporation plant in Columbus, Ohio. The seal on the newly installed manway of an operating reactor failed. The failure occurred at an internal pressure that the company believed the equipment could safely contain. But the new manway was not designed to contain that pressure. And the equipment was not adequately pressure tested before it was put into service. As a result, pressurized solvent vapors and hot resin liquid escaped through the closed manway, and a flammable vapor cloud quickly spread throughout the facility. Within two minutes, the vapor cloud found an ignition source, causing a massive explosion and fire. The incident fatally injured one worker, seriously injured eight, and caused over $90 million in property damage. The CSB's investigation determined that Yankin Majestic failed to ensure the mechanical integrity of the newly installed manway, which was not adequately designed, constructed, or pressure tested. The company also lacked engineering controls that could have prevented the incident, and they did not have adequate emergency response preparations in place. The result was a tragic accident that could have been prevented. Yankin Majestic Paint Corporation is a coatings and resin manufacturer located in Columbus, Ohio. The resin plant was comprised of an enclosed building that housed six reactors called kettles. The kettles were located in separate rooms within the production building and were used to produce various resins in batch reactions. For each batch reaction, ingredients were added to the vessels and stirred by an agitator. The resin ingredients were also heated, sometimes by furnaces located directly underneath the kettles. Toward the end of each batch operation, a kettle operator would analyze samples of resin to determine if the reaction was complete. On the evening of April 7, 2021, one of the kettles, called Kettle 3, was being used for a batch operation which had proceeded normally, and the resin production was nearly complete. At 10.22 p.m., Kettle 3's operator was in the laboratory testing a sample of resin when the kettle's agitator unexpectedly shut down. A few minutes later, the operator returned to the kettle room but did not realize the agitator had stopped and no audible alarms alerted him to the issue. At this time, the temperature within the kettle was 455 degrees Fahrenheit. Believing the agitator was still on, the operator began the next steps in the batch operation. These steps, which included adding solvent to the kettle, were intended to begin cooling the contents of the reactor. The solvent, called varnish makers and painters naphtha, is a highly flammable liquid. Over a period of 26 minutes, approximately 300 gallons of flammable solvent flowed into the kettle. But because the agitator was not operating, the solvent did not mix with the resin as planned. Unknown to the operator, the solvent formed a liquid layer on top of the hot resin. Around midnight on April 8th, the temperature within the kettle was recorded at 424 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately 100 degrees higher than it should have been after 90 minutes of cooling. At this point, the operator realized something was wrong and began to investigate the potential cause. He discovered that the agitator was off and turned it back on. When the agitator began mixing the hot resin with the liquid solvent layer, the liquid solvent suddenly vaporized. The pressure within the kettle increased rapidly from about zero to nine PSIG in a matter of seconds. The closed manway on the top of the kettle could not contain the pressure. Suddenly, a mixture of hot resin liquid and flammable solvent vapor erupted through the seal around the manway's lid and sprayed the operator. Within moments, the entire kettle room filled with thick white vapor. The operator tried to reverse his actions and turn off the agitator, but he could not see through the thick vapor cloud and was having trouble breathing. About 20 seconds into the release, he abandoned the room 
and with the help of another employee, escaped the facility. The release continued, and a low-lying cloud of flammable solvent vapors flowed into the adjacent areas of the plant. On the ground floor, multiple flammable gas detectors inside the building detected the cloud, but none were configured to sound an audible alarm, and no employees used the intercom system or activated the fire alarm to alert workers on site to evacuate. Therefore, many of the employees in or near the resin plant were unaware of the dangerous situation unfolding around them. One employee who saw the gas cloud believed it was a steam leak and ran into the building to investigate. But by the time he saw the vapors pouring out of the Kettle 3 operating area, it was too late to evacuate everyone in time. At 12.04 a.m., approximately two minutes after the release began, the flammable vapors found an ignition source and exploded, severely damaging the resin plant. The huge explosion shook nearby homes and was seen over two miles away. The explosion ignited additional flammable material at the plant, causing a large fire that burned for 11 hours. Some employees of the resin plant had to evacuate the building by running through flames. Three employees were reported as missing. Two of those employees were found trapped in the damaged building and were rescued by firefighters. Later that morning, the third employee was found partially covered by rubble from the explosion. He had been fatally injured in the incident. A total of eight employees were transported to area hospitals for treatment of injuries, including burn injuries, a leg amputation, and other trauma from the explosion and building collapse. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board launched an investigation and identified three safety issues that led to the fatal incident at Yenkin Majestic. They are mechanical integrity of low-pressure vessels, safeguard selection and the hierarchy of controls, and emergency preparedness. The first safety issue found by the CSB is mechanical integrity of low-pressure vessels. In January 2021, three months before the incident, Yenkin Majestic installed a new 20-inch manway onto Kettle 3. Kettle 3 was considered by Yenkin Majestic to operate at atmospheric conditions, but was documented to have a maximum operating pressure of 12 PSIG. When the manway was designed, no calculations or analyses were performed to ensure the manway's lid could contain all anticipated pressures. After the new manway was added, it began leaking soon after Kettle 3 began processing its first batch. In response, Yenkin Majestic shut down the kettle and installed a thicker gasket. The company then performed a leak check to test the integrity of the manway lid up to only 4 PSIG of internal pressure. 4 PSIG was the pressure that triggered the kettle's emergency cooling interlock and alarm. The manway passed that leak check and satisfied with the results, Yenkin Majestic returned the kettle to service. But Yenkin Majestic never tested whether the new manway could contain all anticipated pressures, such as the documented 12 PSIG maximum operating pressure. And on the day of the incident, approximately three months later, the manway failed at just 9 PSIG. Facilities should ensure that equipment can safely operate within their documented operating limits. For example, after equipment alterations, facilities should ensure that the equipment can still safely operate under normal conditions, as well as abnormal and emergency conditions. In this case, had Yankee Majestic pressure tested the kettle, at least up to its documented pressure relief device setting, it could have identified that the manway could not hold pressure exceeding 9 PSIG. This could have led to corrective actions that may have prevented the large release from the manway that led to the deadly explosion. In addition, the CSB notes that pressure vessels that operate over 15 PSIG are subject to pressure vessel safety codes that require, for example, hiring a certified repair organization, the involvement of a qualified pressure vessel inspector and qualified engineer to approve the alteration work 
ensuring new designs meet the applicable code, and pressure testing to ensure the components are compliant with the construction code. In this case, Yenkin Majestic believed that Kettle 3 was exempt from those safety codes because the vessel did not normally operate above 15 PSIG. As a result, Yenkin Majestic did not conduct safety measures required in the codes that could have prevented the incident. In fact, the CSB found there is very little guidance for the design construction and alteration of low-pressure vessels in highly hazardous chemical service like Kettle 3. More specific guidance could have directed Yenkin Majestic and its contractors to use appropriate design, installation, and testing practices for the addition of the new manway on Kettle 3, which might have prevented the incident. Although industry codes and standards currently exempt pressure vessels not exceeding 15 PSIG, this incident shows that vessels that have the potential to build any pressure above atmospheric may still have safety implications for personnel in the vicinity, especially when the vessels are in highly hazardous chemical service. As a result, the CSB made recommendations to the American Petroleum Institute and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers to develop specific design, construction, and alteration guidance for low-pressure process vessels in flammable and other highly hazardous chemical service. The second safety issue identified by the CSB is safeguard selection and the hierarchy of controls. The hierarchy of controls is a risk management principle based on ranking hazard controls from the most effective to the least effective. For example, engineering controls, which reduce hazards through equipment modifications and safety devices, are more effective than administrative controls like procedures, training, and warnings. Administrative controls are inherently less reliable because they depend on human actions to be effective. Yenkin Majestic had added some engineering controls to Kettle 3 in the form of several safety interlocks. For example, one interlock prevented the furnace from starting if the agitator was off. But Yenkin Majestic had not configured engineering controls to prevent the addition of solvent to the kettle while the agitator was off. And Yenkin Majestic relied on the kettle operator to recognize that the agitator had unexpectedly turned off through computer panel status indicators and observation of the kettle equipment, not an audible alarm. Therefore, the operator was able to add solvent to the kettle while unknown to him the agitator was off. And when he later discovered that the agitator was off and turned it back on, this step ultimately led to the vaporization of the solvent, its release, and the subsequent fatal explosion. Facilities should use the hierarchy of controls to design and maintain fault-tolerant systems so that a single human action, such as turning on an agitator, cannot set off an irreversible chain of events that leads to a catastrophic incident and loss of life. As a result, the CSB made a recommendation to Yenkin Majestic to demonstrate the use of prevention through design using the hierarchy of controls in future resin plant designs, specifically prioritize inherently safer design and engineering controls to prevent process safety events. Finally, the third safety issue found by the CSB is emergency preparedness. The CSB found that Yenkin Majestic did not have adequate safeguards in place to minimize the consequences of the incident. During the incident, gas monitors near Kettle 3 detected the flammable vapors about one minute after the release began. In response, the system automatically shut down the furnaces in that area and sent an email alerting an off-site employee. But the gas monitors did not sound audible alarms to warn on-site employees of the hazard and the need to evacuate. Additionally, Yenkin Majestic did not specifically train its employees to recognize and respond to the hazard of a flammable vapor cloud. 
This overall lack of hazard recognition led to some personnel approaching the hazardous gas to investigate the release instead of initiating a plant-wide evacuation. Lastly, Yenkin Majestic allowed operators in the resin plant to wear cotton short sleeve shirts while working in proximity to flammable materials unless they were performing specific tasks. Had the resin plant employees been required to wear flame-resistant personal protective equipment, multiple employees' burn injuries may have been reduced or prevented. At Yankin Majestic, better emergency response preparations, such as flammable gas detectors that trigger audible alarms, increased training of operators on potential hazards, and adequate personal protective gear could have reduced the severity of this incident. Instead, employees at the resin plant were largely unaware and unprepared for the incident, resulting in multiple employee injuries and one fatality. Finally, the CSB made recommendations to Yenkin Majestic to install flammable gas detectors that trigger both visual and audible alarms to alert plant personnel of a hazard and develop and implement requirements for personnel to wear flame-resistant uniforms in all operating areas that process flammable chemicals. The CSB calls on operating facilities to examine the three safety issues identified in our report and apply the key lessons and recommendations to their own facilities. There are thousands of facilities across the country that deal with flammable and other hazardous chemicals at low operating pressures. For them, safe pressure vessel operation, implementation of the hierarchy of controls, and proper emergency response training for personnel are imperative. Thank you for watching this CSB safety video. For more information, please visit csb.gov.